Did you hear about the Frenchman who designed the US? I'm going to tell you that story and how he did it. Born in Paris, France on November 5th, 1893, Raymond Lowy studied engineering, later serving in the French army during World War I. Even during the horror of war, Raymond found time to decorate his dugout with wallpaper and draperies, even going so far as tailoring his uniform. During his time there, he attained the rank of captain and was awarded the Cross de Grey and the Commander's Cross for the Legion of Honor. After his parents died of Spanish flu in 1919, his two older brothers emigrated to the United States. He followed a little time after. On the crossing over on the SS France, an auction took place to benefit the families of shipwrecked sailors. He had nothing to auction, but as fate would have it, it was this moment that changed his life and the lives of thousands, if not millions of Americans. With Cosmopolitan magazine in 1950 saying, Lowy has probably affected the daily life of more Americans than any man of his time. He created a small ink drawing of an attractive, modern dressed passenger on the promenade deck. The auctioneer, the British Consul General in New York, Henry Gloucester Armstrong, bought the piece and suggested he get in touch with a magazine editor friend when he landed in New York. This small, seemingly unimportant moment changed the course of history. He started to work as a window dresser at Macy's, Wanamaker's and Saks. In addition, he also worked as a fashion illustrator for Vogue and Harper's Bazaar. But he saw so much ugliness in the world. While he was excited by the newness of America, it was on a visit to 120 Broadway with his brother that he realized New York was the product of the machine age. Greasy, angular and crude. He had dreamt that things would be slender, streamlined and simple. Something had lit a fire in him, one which he would start to act on through his first industrial design job, where he redesigned the duplicator machine built by Gestentner. The company responded so positively to the design that he was kept on retainer for the rest of his career. But it wasn't until he designed the 1934 Sear Roebuck & Co. Cold Spot Refrigerator that Raymond became a household name. Within two years, sales of the refrigerator grew from 60,000 to 270,000 a year. I said that I would share how Raymond Lowy achieved his success. Well, it all came down to trash. The Pennsylvania Railroad approached Lowy to work out how they could come up with a better way for passengers to dispose of their waste at their Penn station in New York. Raymond threw himself into the job spending over three days observing how passengers behaved. This anthropological approach to design was revolutionary and likely became one of the first examples of user-centered design. But these designs were only the beginning. Raymond went on to design not only products, he also designed some of the most iconic logos of the time. Notable designs included a refresh of the Lucky Strike logo, the Studebaker Avanti car, the Shell logo, he added white text to the Coca-Cola bottle, he designed the BP logo, he even designed the livery for Air Force One. The trash recommendations were well received and the railroad gave Lowy the prodigious job of designing their next locomotive. He again immersed himself in the project, riding their trains for thousands of miles, talking to passengers and crew. The approach allowed small design details to be designed and new additions such as toilets to be installed. But it wasn't just this user-centered design approach that made Lowy's approach so unique. Lowy created a framework to help him push the boundaries of design. He called it Maya, which stood for most advanced yet acceptable. And it is the subtle balance between people's love for the new, but resistance for the unfamiliar. This thinking has gone on to be recognized across sectors from music to film, building on the familiar, with iterative changes of the new. It's how phone companies have been able to launch a new phone every 12 months, or fashion companies to bring out a new season range. So what do you think? Is there a secret to designing all these products? Do let us know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the fable. Do give us a like and do consider subscribing. We post nearly every week about design, design thinking, brand and digital. Thanks again and see you in the next one.